Hi, it's Therese from Lost in Paper and I'm here for Alton You today and I'm going to be showing you how I stamp out the Peony Bouquet set. Uh, I've noticed that people stamp the layering sets differently depending on what you're comfortable with and I just thought I'd show you how I find it easiest. So this set actually has two different flowers and three different leaves. It also has a couple of lots of berries in there and it does actually look like there's a lot of stamps in this set but because it's a layering set you know like there's multiple images for the one um, image so what I did was actually draw some lines on with some permanent with a permanent marker on my packaging so I could tell which ones were together but I also happen to have this um, bouquet, peony bouquet die and that has a really good guide to how your finished images should look so let's get started. So I'm going to be using the Alta New Crisp inks today and my first layer of stamping I like to use the on the flowers I like to use the solid image. So I've got some Peach Perfect ink and I'm going to stamp this out a couple of times because I want to show you a couple of variations on this. And I'm just using some smooth white cardstock. And on my second image, it doesn't stamp out perfectly, but this is just the one I want to show you the variation on, so I'm not too worried. And here is where I cheat. I actually use the outline image as my second stamp, and that way I can tell exactly where the shadows of the petals are going to be. I'm going to be using this jet black ink on my card today but for the variation I thought I'd just show you what a difference it can make to use like a colored ink for the outline and this is the crimson crisp ink so if you look at your stamps you can see there's the solid image the outline and then there's the two different sort of layered stamps the one with the bigger sort of surface area is your shadow and the one with the smaller surface area is going to be the darkest because that's going to be right inside your petals. So that you want that to be your darkest colour. So my second colour today is going to be the crimson on both my images. I'm going to use the same colours except for the outline. So what you need to do is actually get right over top of your stamp. So you're going to find out I'm going to need to edit this a little bit. But if you look at the stamp, you can see the shape of the flower before you stamp and then because I've actually stamped the outline and I've used black it makes it easier you can actually see where the edges of the petals are and line your stamp up much easier so I've done that on both I've used the crimson on both of the flowers and my final color which is my darkest color I'm doing the same thing it's all facing the same way I can see because of the circle of the flower I'm tucking the shadows into the base of the petals and stamping and this color is called velvet it's just beautiful and you can see what a difference it can make by using a um, you know a colored outline it's almost like no line coloring <laughs> okay I'm going to stamp out the second flower now I'm going to do a few of these and my base color this time is the rouge it's one of the newer inks and this outline stamp you can actually see where the leaves you know, like the um, the leaf next to the petals are so I can line that up and then I can actually stamp according to where the outline of the um, what do you call it solid stamp is I'll do the same again here and now I want to do my shadowing so I've chosen the stamp that has a little bit more uh, coverage on it and my second color again is the crimson and I can tuck it into the leaves and in around those petals because I've stamped it in black I can see exactly where they're going to be so I'll do that on both of these and use the velvet again for my final layer so this is um, the darkest layer it's going to be at the base of your petals the colors I've got for my leaves are the frayed leaf 
And this is pretty easy to line up this sort of one, but I found the second or the shadow layer was a little bit more difficult. And on that layer, I've got the forest glades. It's just slightly a bit darker. Is that a good English? <laughs> I don't know. I'm post night duty, so English isn't my strong point right now. <laughs> now this is where things, I'm changing it up a bit. I'm, I've got the leaves and I'm actually stamping my outline stamp first. And I'm staying with the jet black just for this video because I thought, well, it's easier. I'm going to be using it to make a card ultimately. So I might as well keep it all sort of in matching. So the outline image first, then my base color. And for my base color, I'm using frayed leaf. And that makes it really easy to line up because I'm basically just filling in the layers with my base color. I know this seems like layering up stamps, changing inks and everything. It seems like it takes forever, but it actually doesn't. It's really quite quick once you get going. And a good idea is to sit down and make multiples while you're doing it, make a stack of them and then you can just put your cards together when you're ready if I, I decided today purposefully to use the um, not use my misty and just use my blocks and um, show you how I would do it with my blocks but a misty would actually speed this up quite a bit uh, I don't know if you noticed but the second leaf there I actually did my second stamp with the frayed leaf again just to see how that would go. It did dry out a lot lighter than it looks in the picture here, but it still worked well. It's a good way to stretch your inks. If you don't have lots of colors, you can use the same ink that you own, but double stamp it. It will give you a darker image. Now this leaf image here, I um, stamped. It's only got two layers. It's really easy to line up. I just stamped it out in some black ink and filled it in, one with frayed leaf and one with the forest glades. And I'm not going to be using this image on my card, but I just thought I'd show you what it looks like and how the layers work. Uh, I've actually stamped the, the outline image with the evergreen, which is the darkest green color. And then I'm going to do my base color again, which is frayed leaf. And the shadowing color, forest glades, this is quite a large area that it covers. So it really gives a lot of depth to this leaf. And easy enough to line up. For the berries, this one here is simply just a two-step stamp. I just stamped out the outline with some black and then I'm using some crimson. I could, I didn't really, I could be bothered masking it off, so I'm cheating and just using a pencil <laughs> to colour the leaves in over top of the red ink. No one will ever know. But if you want it to be finicky, you could actually stamp it twice. And the final berry image, I decided to go with the black ink for the outline, the frayed leaf, I think, for the leaves. And then the berries were stamped in two steps. Uh, rouge for the actual base of the berry. And then for the outline, I used uh, the crimson ink. I could have actually used the black to do the outline, but I don't know, I chose to use the crimson. Just to change it up a bit see i'm not at this point i wasn't really sure what i was going to be doing with my card i was just playing with my inks and my stamps now i'm lucky enough to have the dies to match this stamp set but you could simply just cut them out fussy cut them out by hand but what i wanted to show you is that you can actually cut multiples at once if you don't stamp your images too close together you can adhere your dies down just with some low tack tape and run a few through your die cutting machine all at the same time. It just saves um, time, really. And aren't they pretty? Just love these flowers. I'm so happy to have them. <laughs> so I'm going to run all these images through my die cutting machine. And they do leave a small border around the edge of them, which I quite like the look of and i have made a card using them and i'll just share that here and i've got another video that will show you how i made this card so if you link to that through here i'd love to see you at that video on my youtube channel so till next time happy paper crafting 
Bye.